This video is about post-tension slab on ground. My name is Tyler Lay, and I love me some concrete. A big thanks to Eric from Texas Barnuminiums and also Jerry at SSI for your help on this video. I appreciate you guys both. The dream is to have the beautiful project. You know, the one that you can show off to all your friends on your cell phone because you're so proud of it and it's so amazing. You know, that's just a sweet sog. Oh, yeah. What? What? Sog? Yeah, sog. That stands for slab on ground. Ah. Sog? Yeah, that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Now, the thing that will ruin your slab on ground is when cracks happen. You know, cracks, they like, you see them and they strike the fear in your heart. Like, kind of like seeing blood or like a crazy saber tooth tiger or, you know, when you tell your neighborhood that they shouldn't build an asphalt road and they instead should build a concrete road, but they don't. Yeah, fear in your heart. You know what I'm talking about, right? So how do you control cracks? Well, after you've cast your slab on ground, you're making it perfect, smooth, doing the final, final finish on it. After about 14 to 18 hours after, after when you start casting, you're gonna have to start cutting joints. This is where you use a saw. You actually pre-cut about one third of the depth into the joint and you're just making a place for cracks to form. Yeah, see the crack? Yeah, that's good. We controlled it. It doesn't look as awful and horrible, but cracks and joints, they're just huge maintenance problems and everyone can win if we can get rid of them. So how did the Romans handle this? You know, they're pretty smart, right? They made some long lasting structures they used arches, right? Concrete arches. And one of the big benefits of that is that arch is almost totally in compression. If you say, Tyler, you should do videos on arches I already have, check out the card. How could you ever do this in a slab? We're gonna use something called post-tensioning or PT. Here's a poor man's version of PT with some household goods. That's like a sponge to represent the concrete and that's like a ponytail holder. Right, that's the post-tensioning tendons, and you can see it's in compression there. This is what a formed slab looks like. It's got a plastic sheet at the bottom so a thing can move around when it needs to. It's got these tendons. These tendons are pre-stressing strands that are wrapped in kind of a plastic material with grease inside of them. These tendons are usually spaced anywhere between 36 to 24 inches, so I said about 30 or so. And this is kind of what it looks like on the side. We have this concrete shown in gray. We have the tendon there. We have something on the end called the dead end or the anchor. It looks something like this. And then the other end, we have the free end or the live end. That's where you get to pull on it. First, you cast on these stress pockets, these kind of voids inside of it. And then we're gonna yank on it or pull on it to stress it. So here it is in action. Now, there is a hydraulic ram stressing pulling about 4,000 pounds is what it's being pulled at. That is about 10 cars in weight. And then you hear a little pop noise at the end and then it's done. Now that little pop noise is this anchor going in place. You can see the teeth there on the side that grips into the strand and then it kind of digs in or holds it in place. Here's what that looks like once it's finished looking inside of that, that hole and there is the anchor there holding the strand. So what are the benefits of this? Well, you get this huge force on the end of your slab. You're putting it in compression. This means this is gonna double the stress that's gonna take to crack the concrete. This allows you to make your joints between 200 and 500 feet apart. You can have less cracks. If you do have cracks, they will be extremely small. And if you have expansive soils, then this is the system for you. And you're gonna get happy owners in the end because they're gonna have very, very minimal maintenance. Now, there are some big challenges with this. The costs are higher for big, long strand runs, but usually actually for house slabs, the costs aren't that different than rebar, but you've got to protect these anchors and also the tendons. It is a challenge to modify the slab. If you ever have to cut the slab, you don't want to be cutting these tendons. That's going to be pretty dangerous. These tendons can also sometimes snap when you're stressing them. Also sometimes dangerous. And there is something called bursting stresses. What? Bursting stresses. Well, 
Here is our friend, the sponge with the ponytail holder on it. And see that, that squish there at the end? That's gonna cause high stresses. You're gonna need some higher amounts of reinforcing there at the edge of your slab. But that is not something that is a weirdness for an experienced PTer. They're gonna know exactly what to do with that. So in summary, PT slabs are a great tool to reduce cracking and also joints. They may be more complicated than rebar, but they are worth the effort when they are done right. So with that sweet sogging, ladies and gentlemen, good sog to you. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up Think about subscribing to my channel and leave me a comment below. Have you ever built a PT slab or have any questions I didn't cover? If you if you do, then please let me know below. And check me out on, on Instagram at concrete.tyler. Bye.